In this video, I will show you how to do the calculation for a common redox titration question. The question will appear on the screen now. The first step is to be able to rewrite the question into the form of chemical equations. These can be balanced equations like you're used to, but they could also be quasi equations like I'll show you. All we want is to be able to break the paragraph down into easily manageable chunks. So as you can see, I've now rewritten the question in the form of balanced equations and quasi equations. Uh, so the first part, we've taken an impure salt. It's got quite a complicated formula, but we'll stick with it. 2.29 grams. We've written impure uh, just to keep track of what's going on. And we dissolve it in water. Okay, 250 cubic centimetres. Okay, and again, I've written that down to keep track of it. Um, the question obviously involves this ion, C2O42 minus, which is called oxalate or ethane dioate. So just to simplify things, that's the only thing I need to include in those products. Okay, so I've written other products here. We don't need to worry about those. No need to overcomplicate. I then take what we call an aliquote, so a sample out of the larger sample, and we would do that using a pipette. So we started with 250 cubic centimetres and we've drawn out a 25 cubic centimetre sample. In the final part, we do a titration. And you may have done this yourselves in class, uh, but we've got our permanganate ion, as given in the question, reacting with our oxalate ion from up here, 25 cubic centimetres. It's the same sample. And at this stage, we have rewritten the question into bite-sized chunks using a combination of balanced equations and quasi-equations. And at this point, we can start to actually do the calculation. And really what you're looking for is two pieces of information about the same chemical. And in this case, that obviously appears there with the permanganate. So we know a volume and we know a concentration. And from GCSE, you know that we can work out the moles. Okay, so as discussed, we've got two pieces of information here and we can work out a moles quite easily from GCSE knowledge. Okay, concentration times volume, remembering to convert the volume into cubic decimeters. Once we have the number of moles in a balanced equation, we can quite easily work out the number of moles of the oxalate ion. We know that they're in the ratio two to five. So we take this number, divide it by two, and then multiply it by five. And we get this number here. And now the beauty of what we've done is it's now really easy to work back. It would be very difficult to do without these quasi equations. So if I have 1.32 times 10 to the minus three moles here, I have 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 moles up here. Okay, it's the same sample. Okay. And before we took the aliquot, we have 10 times that. 1.32 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. Okay, and again, without all of these quasi equations, that would be something that could be easily messed. It's quite common to be out by a factor of 10 with these calculations. Equally, up here, when we dissolved the sample in the water, we had 1.32 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. The number of moles shouldn't change between those two points. And now, to go from here to here, we can see that we've got three of the oxalate ions on this side. And in this complicated formula, this whole thing contains within it three oxalate ions. Okay, so I've got one big, really complicated formula that we don't need to worry about. But we can see that within it, there are three 
of these oxalate ions. And so that means that whatever number we have here, we divide it by three. And that tells us the number of this large thing we have on the left. And when we divide by three, we get 4.4 times 10 to the minus three moles. And in brackets after that, I've put pure to remind us that that's the pure substance. Now, what we need to do at the end of the calculation is to work out the percentage purity of this original sample. So we have the original impure mass, and we've just worked out the pure number of moles. So the next step is to convert this pure moles into a pure mass. So to work out the pure mass, uh, again, uh, it's GCSE level knowledge. Quite difficult because we also have to work out the MR of this really complicated formula. Uh, no more difficult than GCSE, just much, much more tedious. Uh, so if I add up all of these relative atomic masses, I get 491. And of course, the exact decimal place depends on the exact level of accuracy on your periodic table, but it should be around 491. We take that number, multiply it by the number of moles, you get a pure mass of 2.16 grams. Okay, 2.16 grams. And so when we work out the percentage purity, So as you can see, the percentage purity of the original salt, this one up here, is going to be the pure mass, which we've just calculated as 2.16 grams, divided by the impure mass given in the question, which is 2.29 grams, and then multiplied by 100% to make it a percentage. And when we do that, we get a value of 94.3%, taken to three significant figures. This type of calculation is very common at A level. The trick, as I've said, is to split it into these individual equations. Okay, the first two are what I would call quasi equations. The last one is an actual chemical equation for a titration given in the question. You can check your final answer because we expect it to be a number less than 100. If you have a number more than 100, you've obviously made a mistake and you need to go back and double check your calculation. 